In this video, we're going to be talking about what to do after installing Arch Linux. So typically after an Arch Linux tutorial, you are left um, at a blank screen here or with just a prompt and you don't really know what to do next and you're kind of just expected to figure it out after that. So this video is the follow-up video to all the videos that just kind of leave you here. Um, so as always, I'm going to leave a link in the description to my blog. It'll have every single command that I run in this video. Um, and so let's talk about what we're going to be getting out of this video. So we're going to be setting up your network. We're going to be adding users. We're going to be giving them sudo access. Uh, we're going to be installing a display manager, which is really just a login screen. Uh, so you can swap between different window managers or desktop environments or really just generally log in. Uh, we're going to be installing a window manager and optionally a desktop environment, or you could just install the desktop environment if that's all you want and you don't want a window manager. Uh, we're going to be installing a term terminal emulator, and we're going to be installing a browser and a file manager. All right, so let's get started. So what we'll do, the first thing we'll need to do is sign in as root, unless you already have a user, uh, but I recommend signing in as root right now, and uh, put in the password. So what we'll do next is ping arch Linux org and we do not have internet so the reason that we don't have internet is because maybe in the last video you installed network manager and I hope you installed something like network manager because it's kind of the best tool for uh, for you know uh, enabling your Wi-Fi or enabling your Ethernet connection or all that kind of good stuff right so right now I'm obviously kind of over Ethernet because I'm in a VM uh, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to start network manager. So system CTL start. And what this will do is start it from my current session manager. All right. And then you're going to want to enable it. So this will make it persist every single time that you log in. All right. And now we can ping archlinux.org and now we have internet just as long as you had that. Now, the reason I have it right away is because I'm connected, you know, over ethernet, right? And so you might be using Wi-Fi. So if you're using Wi-Fi, enter something like NMTUI and you can just connect to your uh, Wi-Fi from here. So I'm going to quit out of that and I'm going to press control L to clean up my screen there. Um, so that's Wi-Fi. Now we're going to want to add a user. So user add flag M flag G wheel whoops that's not a flag flag G wheel um, and then the name of your user now you might be wondering okay well what does wheel stand for and what is all this stuff so we're gonna be adding a user the G stands for group and we're gonna be adding them to the wheel group the wheel group is what essentially gives you access to sudo right so we're gonna press enter and we're gonna add Chris to that group after that we're gonna give Chris a password all right, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and there we go. So if you wanted to, you could switch users and you can use SU to switch users to the user that you're on. I recommend not doing that right now. I recommend just staying as root. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is make sure that you have VI installed, and then what we'll do is VI sudo, right? So to install VI, and I'm not gonna be installing any packages in this video because uh, I want to focus on configuration and all that stuff. So every single time that you need to install something, you can pause the video and then catch back up. Um, so what you'll want to do is Pacman flag S VI if you don't already have it. And it doesn't ship with VI anymore, so you may not already have it. So we're going to enter VI sudo. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to enable uh, some keys here so you can kind of see what I'm pressing. So to move around, you're going to want to use H, J, K, and L, or you could use the arrow keys if you really wanted to. And so what I'm going to use is these. You can press J to go down and K to go up. Or we could press the search key here and look for wheel. So that's the forward slash, and then I typed wheel, and then I'm going to type enter. That's going to take me to the first instance of wheel. Then I'm going to press N. I'm going to press N. Now you can see I already commented this one out, but what it looked like before now is it looked like that. So they were both commented out and we want to choose which wheel group we want to use. Now this wheel group, every single type, time you press or every single time you try to sudo do something, right? Uh, super user do, right? You're gonna need to enter your password. Um, if you comment this one out or uncomment this one, uh, it won't prompt you for a password. So I like that. Um, if you have security concerns about that or if, you know, for whatever reason you like typing in your password all the time, you can comment out the first one. 
And there's other things you can do in this file, but this is the stuff that I think you're probably most interested in doing right now. All right, so now we can probably get rid of this. And that's probably one of the most difficult things we're gonna have to do all video. Um, if you messed up with your user earlier, uh, you could use your, like if you put in the wrong, you know, the wrong name or you decide you wanna change it or something like that, you could do something like this, user del flag r, and that'll recursively remove uh, the Chris user here or whatever user you have. And if you wanna figure out how to use some of the other ones, you can type man and then the command and then it'll kind of give you more options for things you can do with them. Now you're gonna to wanna to pause the video and install Zorg server and Zorg in it, X in it. That's essentially going to give you access to, you know, like your X display and all that kind of good stuff. And that's just displaying uh, really anything, a desktop environment or a window manager. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is install a login screen. So also, you know, pause the video. Install LightDM, uh, that's just the display manager. Um, then the next thing you can kind of swap out, but for now we're just gonna use the GTK greeter, it's the default, you don't have to do any configuration, it just works. Um, and then we're gonna install settings. The reason we wanna install settings is because if you don't install settings, you won't be able to swap between window managers and desktop environments and stuff. All right, so we got that now. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is just like we enabled the um, network manager service, we're gonna wanna system CTL enable light DM. All right, and now we created that sim link, so we know that that worked. We don't want to start it because uh, it's a login screen, right? So we're not going to be going back to that until we reboot, so we'll just enable it. Now you're going to want to do system CTL list unit uh, files. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we want to make sure that the stuff is actually um, enabled. Or we kind of want to know what's happening when we do this, right? And so this is a good command to find out like, okay, well, what's enabled? So you can see that LightDM is enabled and you can see that Network Manager is enabled. So if you're noticing that your Network Manager is not working or LightDM is not working, which is our login screen, right? That's most likely because it's not enabled here. And if it says disabled, well, then you know what your problem is, right? Okay, so moving on. If you want to install a window manager, window managers are um, very lightweight and they're, you know, this that's what this is. If you're looking around here, it's kind of how you can do, um, if we go over here, you can do all kinds of weird stuff like that, right? And I'll go into future videos of how to like set all that kind of stuff up. Um, so you can install this or you can install a desktop environment. If you install, if you want a very minimal install, you know, just go with the window manager. If you don't want to deal with all of the extra work that it takes to configure a window manager, go with the desktop environment. Um, you can use something like XFCE, that's a pretty lightweight one, KDE and GNOME are options out there. Um, I use i3 because I've been using i3 since I kind of, I don't know, like it's just the first one I ever started with, right? Um, there's other options out there. I know people are pretty passionate about this, right? So if you really like DWM, install DWM. If you really like awesome, uh, DWM is like all done in C. So, you know, there's the benefit of that, I guess. It's got the whole patch system. Awesome is, uh, I think it's all configured in like Lua, which is pretty cool. Um, BSP, BSPWM, I hear is, you know, a lot of people are jumping over to that. And then Xmonad is essentially like, DWM if it was written in Haskell. So yeah, these are other options. There's way more than even this, uh, but you could you know, just install these instead of this. It would be fine. Uh, so the next thing that we're gonna do is after installing these, choose whatever you want. Then we're gonna install a terminal emulator. So, you know, just, I'm gonna use Alacrity because that's what I'm used to and that's what you see uh, over here is Alacrity, but they really all look the same once you strip away a lot of the stuff, right? Um, you can install ST, which is like a suckless terminal. Um, you can install RxVT Unicode. I know that one's pretty popular. Termite Terminator, there's GNOME Terminal, there's XFCE Terminal. I think we get that installed by default with this. Um, but yeah, so, you know, install whatever you like. This is the one that I have installed. Uh, then we're going to install Firefox and Nautilus. Uh, you can install Chromium too, I think. I think that's in the, in the repositories before we actually do stuff with the AUR in the future. And then there's Nautilus, um, which is just gonna be a file manager, so nothing special. So really, what do we do? We just installed like a bunch of junk, we enabled two services, 
And that was all we had to do. There's really nothing left to do after that. So we're gonna reboot now. And that's gonna bring us to our new login screen. So our new login screen um, will look something like this here. And so let me actually go like this. So this is our new login screen. Um, and you might be saying to yourself, well, this is XFCE, but it's not. This is XFCE because we installed XFCE, so it kind of automatically did a few things. And this is what I meant about desktop environments, doing a little extra stuff. But if you click up here, you can choose what you want to kind of go into, right? So we, we can choose i3 or XFCE. Or if you installed Awesome, you could have you could have Awesome up here and DWM and whatever else you want. You can have everything if you want it. I don't recommend installing a ton of stuff, but you know if you want to play around with Window Manager or something like that, that's they generally don't intersect too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the i3 session because I think you know. Most people know how regular desktop environments work, so most people are probably here for i3 anyway. All right, so let's do one, two, three, four. All right, now what it's telling me is that I have not yet configured i3, so uh, that's because I don't have a config file for it, and I'll show you where that is in a second. Uh, so I'm gonna press enter and let it generate it for me, and I'm gonna say that the window key or the win key uh, is gonna be my super key, so, and you'll see why the super key is important in a minute. Um, also, in the beginning, you might have saw uh, that we installed NM Applet. That's what this little guy down here is. So if you look very in the very beginning of the blog, uh, you'll see NM app, or Network Manager Applet. That's what this guy is. You can like swap between things or add a VPN, whatever. Um, all right, so tiling window managers, right? So what you're getting out of this is if I just press super enter and it opens up a terminal. If I press super enter, it opens up another one and another one, right? Um, so if you press... Uh, and you know what I really should do is, let's, uh, I don't know if we can get out of this. It's super easy, there we go. So what I really should do is do something like that. So now whenever I am in here, hopefully, yeah, this stuff shows up. Okay, good, so what I'm gonna do is super shift Q, super shift Q, super shift Q, and that gets rid of the, uh, the tiling terminals and all that kind of stuff, right? If I press super D, I'm gonna open up D menu up here at the top. So let's say I wanted to open Firefox, which we installed. Okay, now I got Firefox open. And I should have internet with any luck, so I don't know if you wanna like search Arch Linux. Yeah, well this is already showing me that I have internet, right? Uh, there you go, we already have internet, it's fast, it's good. There's no problems, right? So now we'll get out of this. It's telling me I'm gonna close tabs, sure. You might notice some of that flickering and stuff too. And we'll fix that in the future too with a uh, uh, compositor or something like that. There's something out there called PCOM. You can look into it. I have some configs on my GitHub about it. So what we'll do is we'll press super enter again and open up a terminal. So if you want to start, you know, adding configurations to this or using somebody else's configurations, you might want to go into dot config and then ls in there. You should see something for XFCE4 because we have that installed. Pulse is your audio and i3 is what we're in now. So we'll do CD i3, all right? And then we will open uh, config. Okay, so this is your i3 config and it's probably nothing, you know, it's a little unreadable at first, not super unreadable, I guess. Um, but this is basically it. And it kind of tells you what all of your commands do and all that kind of good stuff. Now. I wouldn't spend too much time trying to do this all from scratch. There's a lot of people out there who already have super cool configs that do lots of, you know, neat stuff. I recommend just kind of grabbing one of those and uh, working off of that as your base. Um, and then just kind of swapping out the stuff you do and don't like. I have one on my GitHub. I got it from someone else's GitHub and they most likely got it from someone else's GitHub. Or just, you know, played around with this. You could just start from this if you wanted to. Um, all right, so that's pretty much, well, what we'll do is we'll quit out of here. And I think that's pretty much all we'll show. I guess we could also show some other things that are in D menu, like Nautilus is in there. That's our file manager. I don't know if I already brought that up, but yeah. So we have this, so it's like, you know, something familiar. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it. So we, it's been probably around 10, 15 minutes and we have all of it set up. It wasn't that hard to just get started. 
Uh, from here, you can kind of go wild, install a bunch of different stuff. You can see that like, little bar at the bottom. Uh, typically, people swap that out for Polybar. You can swap out D-Menu for something like Rofi. It, you can swap out all kinds of weird stuff in your window manager. Um, and you also have the option to go to XFCE 4 too, if you wanted to. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you want, you can support me over on Patreon if you like the content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.